What's up guys and gals? It is that time, so strap on in. We're playing a little bit more Mountain Blade Warband today by the magnanimous Paradox Studios. Oh, we got a homie over here who's getting jumped. And we can't let that stand. We gotta get up on in this. So let's hit Dash Wall because he's one of our friends. And he stood up for us, and so I think we should stand up for him. Do we have any upgrades ready to go? Alright, let's 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 jump on in here. He's only got 37 guys, and they're jumping in with like 90, so we can't let that stand. You really, in order to be like... If you're part of a faction, I mean, I do this in real life too, like, if you're one of my friends, you're one of my friends. Not gonna let that kind of thing happen to you. Just not gonna let it happen. You ain't going in alone, you know what I mean? So, and that sounded a little bit more dirty than I expected, but <laughs> whatever. Friendships are what they are. I'm gonna have all my troops follow me on out here. We're gonna have our archers take the high ground over where the battle's gonna take place right there. And then my infantry, I'm gonna have them take the valley right here. Cavalry I need on my flanks. Which have been growing slightly lately. Our flanks have been, like, Mad Dog McGriddle, she has been eating a lot of food lately. Like, a lot of the troops are starting to be like, Mad Dog, what are you doing? Like, if you're going to be Empress, I mean, they kind of force you into, like, Calradia. People are super judgmental in Calradia. Like, if you have, like, body issues, they're just kind of, like, assholes about it. And I feel as though, like, the Abercrombie and Fitch-type individuals of Calradia are really trying to focus Mad Dog McGriddle into, like, this image and this product that they can sell now that she's becoming more prominent. Like a well-placed nose. Oh, I thought I got that guy. That was about to be so sick, and I missed it. I was going to try and slash him, then jump over. And I am tired of getting hit by arrows here. Let's go ahead and give the infantry the charge order. I probably should have given that a little bit sooner. But they are fielding a lot of cavalry, which is making this whole thing a tad more scary than it would be like normally. That guy's going to try and spear me. That guy's got some kind of, like, weird hay baler or something. He's got, like, a... I don't even know what that arm hay baler. He's got, like, this giant machine for bailing. <laughs> He's just carrying it, like, hitting people with it. It's like, ah, oh, blung, blung. <laughs> no, it's like a, a hay hook on a stick or something is what I meant to say. Slice him out of that lima lama lamalar armor. Serenade archers are pretty robust. They're pretty good at uh, soaking that damage. Is that it? Okay, so we've got the battle. I had to jump in. I mean, friends are friends, and Dashwall is one of the people that likes us a lot. So we only lost one casualty anyways. He bore the brunt of that thing. Dashwall's up to 17 now, which is really, really good. We didn't capture anybody, which is really, really bad. But we did get a whole lot of his soldiers, so I suppose I'll take that as a consolation prize. Assuming we ever find a ransom vendor ever again. Which is weird, because I've hit up like nine capitals now in between episodes, and still there's no ransom vendors any- Oh, King Harlow, run full! I can't help with that battle. That's King Harlow's, man. Sometimes you gotta know how to be on the lamb, too. Like, there's definitely- you gotta pick your battles. Sometimes it's just knocking out of no one to hold them. Gotta know when to fold them. Know when to walk away, and know when to run. That's- Probably one of the truest songs ever written. I don't even like country. And yet that song's like, there's more information about life in that song than really you're ever going to find anywhere else. Let's go check and see if the Ransom Benders, by chance, have decided to stop by Sargoth. I am happy to see that the king decided not to siege it. Because getting it back would have probably been easy, to be honest. I would have just waited. I don't want to sell that, by the way. Please don't sell that. What I would have done personally is that I... Would have waited till the place fell, and then I would have sieged it right after, and then once we had taken Sargoth, I would have considered declaring our own faction. I don't think we're quite ready for that yet. I still think- I always play things safe. You guys know me. I'm a turtle at heart. I really, really am. Just turtle, turtle. That's what I do. I played a holy paladin, so as we go through life together, just realize that my tactics are selected by a long time spent sitting around bubbling myself and trying to hearthstone out. Let's go to the tavern. When they removed Bubble Hearthing, I can't tell you, like, when they removed Bubble Hearthing, I really felt like they removed a feature of my class. It was so heartbreaking because it was the ultimate troll move. It was the 100% quintessential, like, troll move. Like, somebody tried to get the jump on you while you were fighting, like, ten mobs, and you are just like, oh yeah, bam. And then once we could no longer do that anymore, I was just like, well, I think I really just need to take a look at my life right now and figure out what it is I'm living for. So Vagir's has declared peace, which means I can now go down to Ravadin and whatnot. King Ragnar has declared a feast in Kurad during this peaceful period. We probably want to take a look at our lands 
over in Tizmir and see if possibly we can patch them up a tad to make a little bit more cash before we go anywhere else. I mean, right now we're not hurting for the dosh, so I feel as though our supply of scratch is pretty enormous. I would wager to bet that we're probably one of the richest people in Calradia right now. In fact, we unlocked an achievement. I've never had 100,000 dinars before. I spend my money faster than I get it typically when I play this game. I'm just like, you get banded mail, and you get banded I do like an Oprah thing. I'm like, you get a banded mail, and you get a banded mail. A new banded mail. <laughs> it's just like I do like this ridiculous thing where I just rain gifts down on all of my people. And this time I've really been trying not to do that. I will help the farmer. What is this? Where is your village? Rebash. Okay, well, at least it's not Tizmir. It could be worse. Let's go ahead and help in Rebash. It's down here. Let's do a good deed for the day. You should always do, like, like one good deed a day. Like, your thing for the day. Just to make sure that your karma is squared away. I try to. And I think, like, there's a certain extent where it's like, am I doing this for karma's sake? I don't really believe in karma. But anyways, I believe that things have, like, chickens have a tendency to come home to roost. That's what I think. And so... Do a nice thing every now and again. Give an old lady a seat or something. I think we're fighting forest bandits, so that's not quite so bad. Let's just go ahead and send the infantry in then. They're going to sit back and just shoot arrows at us if we don't get into the fight. I'm going to duck behind this building because I know I've got all eyes on me now. Probably going to be arrows flying from every which direction. And while they're only using hunting bows, which I'm not even sure their hunting bows are capable of getting through my armor, I don't necessarily want to risk taking like 500 shots exactly at like the same time for one damage, which would kill me just as dead as one hit for 50. Okay, so it's time for us to step away now. We've got way too much attention, and then our infantry should be able to handle the rest. Oh, we're back! We are back. Oh, and he blocked. Back to be blocked. Back in block? Sounds like a medieval single by some kind of medieval rock band. Good. And so I'm going to assume since we're all cheering that we've won. People don't typically cheer like this when they lose. Wounded's looking okay. We're not going to take that. We're going to stack up some honor. We're also going to make friends with the people in Raybash. And let's go hit Qdan and see if there's a Ransom Broker here. That's how we want to... Oh, did I let everybody go? No, I've still got them. It's only the Lords that you let go. That's what it is. Tizmir is poor and desolate. Fantastic. I always get the terrible lands. There he is. So let's sell off some of these prisoners make a little fistful of cash. With 25 prisoners, we should make a decent amount of money here. Good, and so that put us up. I wasn't paying attention to what the number was, but I can probably like 2,000 maybe, just like based on what we sold. Traveler, watchman, is there anything I want to hire here? I don't think I've lost any troops lately. I think we're like in really, really good shape when it comes to like how we've been weathering the storm of damage. Metheld has leveled up, and so as I always do, I'm going to take Metheld and give her another strength. Power strike six. She's dealing an extra 50% damage on every single swing that she makes. In addition, she's landed herself almost 200 one hand weapon skill, which means that she is like the one person. Swadians, why do you do this to me? They're going to make it this time. There is not a chance in hell we're going to make it out there. Not gonna let him get away with it though. I am gonna like. It looks like somebody tried to jump in, but the game didn't count it. I see blue fighting. It's kind of weird how like the dialogue, like they really are sort of just like. The lords don't realize when they're beaten. Like, sometimes I wish there was, like, an implemented system in the game where when a lord is facing, like, innumerable odds and they just can't win, they would just automatically surrender. Like, 35 versus a bunch of top-tier troops, you're going to die, man. Like, don't give me any lip back like you're a hard-ass. Like, you don't need to come out here acting hard. We ain't got no candy for you, to quote J-Rock. Speaking of which, there needs to be a J-Rock spinoff. Why this hasn't happened yet, I'm not sure. I've got to figure it's because the universe hates amazing things. But the, like, the world needs a J-Rock spinoff right now. 
from the trailer park boys. Like, he just got famous. At the end of the last movie, he got super famous. And so now they need one where it's like him and T. It could start out just like trailer park boys with T getting out of jail. And it just needs to be him and T rolling around on tour, like, doing hilarious stuff and, like, getting into trouble. Sharpshooters are causing me agony. But not for long. We shall get up in their business. We will get up in that ass like an itch. Is that everybody? Take a look around. Make stock of our foes. And then make sport of them. Yeah, we win. Yeah. He has a pretty impressive group of guys that he's captured. I think in this case, I'm going to take cavalry since that's what I've been out of for a long, long time. So we'll do a couple cavalries here. It's a slaver chieftain in there that I'll take. And beyond all... Oh, there's a couple Vagir knights too. I think I'll take... Unless there's anything else here. Yeah, that gives us a nice little cavalry. So now we've got about 9 to 10 heavily armored guys that are all going to be on our side. And I think that's going to be really, really cool for making our lives a bit easier when it comes to that first initial charge. When we're trying to bowl over that front line and get all those spears out of the way. I do want revenge on every single one of these guys and I am going to get it. So Tariah's about to die. I'm going to take a second and upgrade my troopers. My super troopers. So we're back up to having Sword Sisters again, which is pretty badass. I'm going to put them up in the top of the line. Although that Soul Sister... I mean, the Soul Sister. Hey, Soul Sister. She looks like she has a beard from that angle. But I think it's just like the way that the game has positioned the little... cutout of the character. I'm going to put them back up at the top of the list with everybody else. I also need to make sure that other people are spawning in... with reasonable frequency here. Alright, so now it's Turiah's turn. Surrender or die, man. Surrender or die. At this point, I feel like the game would go a lot more rapidly if I could just execute people, too. I'm going to take my archers. I'm going to position them. Right there is looking pretty good. Pull the cavalry back with me. Infantry we're going to put out in this open field over here. And then we're going to resituate our archers a little bit closer. Because I do feel as though I overextended them in that little bit. And now that everybody's following around, let's go ahead and wheel to the left. We're going to come in right on the left side. It's kind of a crushing blow right there. I don't think we need to be using tactics on this level, like anything complicated or fancy. But you might as well weigh things in your direction if you can. I'm not going to allow them to hang back and skirmish for too long because they've got a lot of archers and things. And these are definitely Nord troops. He's a Nord trader nonetheless, which makes me want to beat him down super hard. His betrayal is not becoming of a Nordic man or woman. And on this field, I really feel like these are revenge battles for me. It's just me being like, revenge is best served cold. Or best served really as quickly as possible. I mean, if you can really just kind of lay it down, like there's that one moment where you have that quip that comes back, where the enemy says something to you and then you say something to them, and then there's just like that silence because they know they've been owned. That's really the kind of revenge that I want. That sort of like demoralizing, kind of, I, I suppose just rubbing their nose all in it. Just kind of a boastful, hubris-filled win. How good was that helmet? That helmet looked, oh, I thought it said 54. I was like, that is a really anomalous value for a Nordic helmet. And Urube, where are you going, pal? Where do you think you're going? No, this ain't over yet. You best you know, just come back and take your lickings, man. Come back and take them. You guys need to, like, realize that when you do this kind of stuff to me, there's going to be some kind of, like, repercussions. Like, there are going to be retaliations involved. Like, I just can't let it stand. I'm going to start scouting around for castles that they might have that are going to be lightly defended. I don't think they have any right now. But they might. 175 there. I really feel as though there's been some kind of patch that's made them put a lot more people in castles than they used to. 
We have a campaign coming now with Dear Ejun, so unfortunately our little scouting mission is going to be broken off early. Being a little bit premature, but then again, it's the Nerd Castle, whatever. Dear Ejun. Oh, you're not the guy anymore? Who's the who's the marshal? Gurlad's the marshal now. Okay, so this guy must have accumulated too much controversy. You need to defend Sargoth. Okay, let's head there. Let's defend this thing. I'll peel one off at a time if I have to. See, it's like sometimes the add-ins on that distance are way too far. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Like... It seems like whenever my guys are right on top of me, they don't add into my battles, but anytime that you're within like a 50 mile radius of anybody on their side, they automatically jump in on their side. And so now, everything that we've worked to attain has been lost. How is that one guy going to pin me down long enough for 700 people to come and attack me? It's a dumb system. It's an absolutely ridiculous system. So we've lost everything. We basically have nothing to work with anymore, so that means I need to go on another recruiting spree. And I'm going to be honest, my temper is feeling very, very short right now. My temper is pretty much non-existent. My steel is quite fragile at the moment. Because I love riding around in circles doing nothing and sitting around while my troops train for months at a time. That's such an enjoyable experience. Let's go to Qdan and buy some food. Obviously we're going to miss the call to action to help out at the capital. And... how are you... what? What the hell is wrong with you idiots? Like, you've come all the way over here just to attack my lands after I, like, release you from combat and all kinds of crazy stuff? Like, really? They are only attacking my lands. Like, all this stuff over here hasn't been attacked. It's all, like, perfectly fine. But no, they're coming after my stuff. Because I keep owning them over and over and over again and making them look stupid. Surrender or die. I'm about to kill you. I really wish that we had, ex like, executions as in Brittenwalda. Or I could just murder people over and over and over again so that you don't have, like, these long-lasting rivalries that that would never exist. Like, when you have a tangible enemy, you wipe them the hell out so that they never bother you again. At least in this time period, you kill them to the man and you salt the fields. That's what they used to do back then. And then you didn't have any problems anymore. I'm not really interested in tactics. I just want to storm the field like a drooling berserker right now and just like infect these people with diseases and just beat them to death and just have blood and nasty destruction everywhere. I'm not happy with Swati right now. I get the distinct feeling they're cheating because I've wiped out their armies over and over and over and over again and they just keep coming back with like 50 troops every single time. Like they walk home for like two seconds and then all of a sudden they're back with a full army. It's really, really difficult to permanently remove anybody from combat in this game, which I feel is one of the major shortcomings, is that you can't really, aside from capturing, which doesn't work all too well, it's completely and totally RNG based, there's no way, like how many times have I beat up Swadia already? How many lords have we laid low, you know? And it just feels like it's an endless grind against the same 40 guys over and over and over again. Capture the Mamluks and the horsemen and leave everybody else for the wolves. We're also going to run this guy down. Look at my upgrades because obviously we have a big old docket of troops that need to be taken care of. It also irks me that like their dialogue is like, alas, you cannot be made to see reason. I thought we were friends. Yeah, I thought we were fr Like, we are friends, dude. I have a positive renown value with you right now, and you're, like, raiding my cities over and over and over again specifically. No, we're not friends anymore. I mean, we're friends in number, but not friends in word. 
Four deed. Forget that. You can't be made to see. I just attacked your stuff, but I'm gonna try and reason with you after, like, murdering a whole bunch of your peasants. How does that sound? It sounds pretty shady, actually. It makes me think that you're a two-faced dick who just needs to be, like, sliced over and over and over again. Now watch out for javelins while I'm flying through here. I don't want to get bogged. Ooh, and there's one right there. I saw it right at the wrong second. And I don't know why they're skirmishing at point-blank range, but they've decided to skirmish at point-blank range. I'm going to knock him off right now. I think it's really that the map has kind of turned into this weird kaleidoscope of stupid, like where you've just got people with no loyalty to anybody just running around the map left and right. I'm really hoping that when they do Bannerlord, like really the campaign AI and the way that the AI interacts with each other is modified a ton because that's really, they've got the combat locked down. It's all the extra stuff that we've had to mod and fix, like in the Warband community. I say we because I haven't worked on anything and I like to include myself in other people's endeavors. Alright, so he's out of the way now. It's a couple more guys down, but I'm willing to bet they'll be back in like four seconds with a thousand more men. Let's get back to the business that we had engaged ourselves in to begin with. And do they run them off on Sargoth, or is it still under siege? Oh, it's still under attack. Okay. Well, this might be a good idea to ninja Sargoth in any case. have a look here and see what they left oh if we had our previous army this would be such an easy fight oh my god this was like we had this we had this by the ass to quote dawn of the dead it's so frustrating to me so deeply frustrating to me and it was my fault but like we had this we had this so hard I still think, I think we've probably still got it. Just because everything there is so low tier that I can't imagine it's going to take us long to bust through the front line. We've got loads of money and like nothing to lose, so I think I may give it a shot and we'll just see what happens here. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. And I can't see through the text here. Lead your troops and attack. We're probably not going to make it if I had to take a rough guess. But it may turn out okay. My archer's right here. And I need them returning fire. As rapidly as we can. I'm going to stand here with a shield on the side and hopefully keep these guys from getting nailed. Our sharpshooter should be able to take care of business. I'm going to go over here and help out with this. And we'll see how these cookies crumble. That guy's on us like ugly on a mule right now. We appear to be busting through the line, so if we can take this castle, I'm going to be incredibly happy. Anything that keeps those guys from shooting my guys is what I would prefer. They should start taking arrows pretty soon. I think the battle is turning in our favor, so I'm going to go ahead and tentatively take a look at the walls. And if we take Sargoth, I'm going to be a happy camper. Believe me, I'm going to be a really, really happy camper. Now, they may siege it right after and try and take it from us, but... Whatever, you know? <laughs> Let them do what they're going to do. In any case, I can say that I took a capital city. And I'm going to try and demand it be given to me. And 
but there it is. We took ourselves a capital city. Hopefully we don't have to do the mini game after this where you gotta like run through the halls. I feel better now. We've accomplished something. Capture some sharpshooters. Oh, we still have 82 up. It should be okay. It should still be alright. We've got some mittens right there that I think might be useful to somebody. We've requested Sargoff. And so now I'm pretty pleased with where we're at. I think I may break off the episode right here. What do they have? Like 47 and whatever? Nothing that's terrifying? I mean, we're pretty beat up at the moment. But I think we're still fielding enough heat to where they'll probably leave us alone for a while. We've got a bit of recovery to do. But in a bit, we should be all right. I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in this somewhat bitchy episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I was feeling a tad gray after what happened right there, but we managed to take Sargoth all for ourselves. And so hopefully it gets awarded to us. If it doesn't then that might be the signal that it's time to make our own faction. It would be risky. We only have 89 men right now, which means that it would really only take, like, one guy to attack us and really ruin our lives. But in any case, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do!